and welcome to the second of four training modules on the principles of earth grounding resistance. My name is Luis Silva and I will be your host for today. There are various types of tests that can be performed to obtain the resistance to ground value. The most common test methods are the Warner and the Schlumberger methods. With these methods, the ground resistance is measured and a formula is applied to determine the resistivity value in no meters which is performed to determine the condition of the soil in which the ground electrodes are to be installed and the best grounding method to use. This is done on new building construction sites and other structures that can carry electrical system fault currents or lightning currents such as cellular telephone towers and utility substations as part of the initial design and specifications. The resistance to ground test is the actual testing of the grounding system components such as the rod, the plate, the ring, etc to verify and document that the selected grounding method and installation meets all minimum resistance requirements in ohms, as required by the code and industry standards. The resistance of the earth, or soil, always varies with soil type, moisture content, temperature, and other factors. Typically, sand and gravel conduct poorly, and clay conducts much better. Although more soil moisture lowers resistance, which allows better conductivity, resistance increases when the soil freezes. Understanding the type of soil and its resistance also helps in selecting the material of the grounding electrodes. In general, the lower the soil resistivity, the higher the corrosiveness of the soil. Electrodes made of stainless steel or copper, either plated or solid, are the least affected by corrosion, and galvanized electrodes are the most affected over time. A soil resistivity test is performed to determine the best type of grounding system to be used, which could include an electrode, a grid, a loop, or a plate. Testing the resistivity of soil requires a test instrument such as a four-terminal ground resistance tester. The test instrument system involves four metal probes that are driven into the earth, connecting conductors long enough to connect the probes back to the meter, a tape measure, a calculator, and paper and pencils. This is only if your device does not have memory for storing and retrieving test results. As seen on the screen, test rods can be rotated 90 degrees to get a more accurate indication of the entire soil condition. If the test results vary widely, additional measurements can be taken at 45 degrees to give a clearer picture of the soil conditions. Source voltage from a power supply is applied between the outside rods, rod 1 and rod 3. A current measurement device is connected into the circuit to measure the current draw from the power supply. The current draw from the power supply is inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit created, or earth resistance. The lower the measured resistance, the higher the fault current carrying capacity of the circuit. Likewise, the higher the measured resistance, the lower the fault current carrying capacity of the circuit. For most measurements, Areas are reached where the rate of increase in the resistance of the earth is low and where the resistance remains relatively constant for a set distance. The area of measurement where the resistance remains relatively constant can be referred to as a plateau area. A ground resistance meter includes a power supply, a voltmeter, a current measurement device, a display for the direct readout of resistance, and all the required components for measuring earth resistance or the resistance to ground value of a grounding system. A three-pole ground resistance meter is a common meter used to test grounding systems. This method is very reliable, accurate, and can be used on any size grounding system, as shown on the screen. Four-pole test measurements are suitable for most applications for measuring the resistance of a grounding system in order to meet the minimum resistance requirement listed by codes typically 25 ohms for rod, pipe, and plate electrodes, provided the test instrument leads and connections are acceptable. Although 25 ohms may be a minimum specified value for a rod, pipe, or plate electrode, a grounding system should have a resistance of 5 ohms or less. In addition, some applications, such as with telecommunications equipment, require that the grounding system meet a 5 ohm or less minimum specification. To determine the resistance of the tower to ground, each ground point must be measured individually, and the loss of parallel connected resistance are applied. As shown on the screen, for example, if the measured resistances of the four test points, tower leg ground, are approximately 45 ohms, 36 ohms, 30 ohms, and 90 ohms, the effective resistance of the total ground system is 10.6 ohms. 
The stateless testing method, as with a selective method, can be performed without removing the ground from the power supply, which have a big advantage on safety and productivity. This method requires the use of two clamps, one to transmit a known voltage and the other to measure the current. The ground tester shown on the right side of the screen also includes the three pole, four pole, and earth resistance capability. Also available are test units that include both transformers in one, such as the ground clamp on the left. The inclusive unit on the left cannot be used to measure earth resistance or perform the three pole, four pole ground test. However, the inclusive unit can be used as a current clamp to measure current, similar to a standard current clamp or the measurement of any leakage current flowing in the grounding system. To take ground resistance measurements on a grounding system with multiple parallel grounding electrodes, such as transformers, utility grounds, transmission tower grounds, and communication ground systems, apply the following procedure. 1. Determine the best position to take ground resistance measurements. 2. Take current measurements in all components of the grounding system, including leakage current measurement, using a grounding meter or a separate current clamp meter. Currents over 1 amp indicate a problem that must be addressed immediately. Also, ground resistance testers specify the maximum current allowed in which a meter can take an accurate measurement. They're typically around 5 amps. Be aware, all current measurements must be considered. Even leakage currents of a few milliamps can cause electric shock. Thank you for listening. We encourage you to continue on to Module 3 of the Principles of Earth Grounding Resistance.